G'day trainers and welcome back to episode 3 of Pokey Geography, the series where we take an in-depth look at the towns, cities, and landmarks throughout the Pokemon world. Today, we're going to be looking at Pewter City, the second major city within the Kanto region. What does this rugged town have to offer? Let's take a look. Pewter City is the second major town in the northwest area of the Kanto region, also known as the Colour of Grey Stone. We first see Pewter City in the anime after Ash and Misty fought their way through the frightening Viridian Forest. The first location we visit within the town is the official Pewter City Pokemon Gym, which is led by Brock, a rock Pokemon specialist. The Pewter City Gym seems to be run as a family business, owing to that before Brock was the leader, his father Flint and mother Lola have both been gym leaders here. Later on, after Flint and Lola leave the Pewter City Gym again, another one of their ten, yes, you heard that right, ten children, Forrest, takes up the mantle as the rock-type gym leader. I guess there isn't much else to do in quiet little Pewter City, and one thing led to another. Within the gym, there's always been a small Japanese rock garden with two gym trainers in place to test the hopeful challenges. There is also a young boy in town that likes to guide new trainers to the gym, if they attempt to take an eastern exit and enter Route 3, he will stop them and guide them to the gym, making sure that no new trainer misses their chance to challenge Brock. If and when a gym challenger defeats Brock, he hands out their first official Kanto gym badge, the Boulder Badge. By obtaining this, Pokemon trainers are granted the ability to command their Pokemon outside of battle with the move Flash. Primarily, for beginner trainers, they will most likely see themselves needing to defeat Brock's Geodude and his Onyx. More experienced trainers will however find themselves up against a much more ferocious battle. We see the Pewter City Gym change leadership in its first appearance, with Brock stepping down to become a Pokemon breeder, and Flint, Brock's father, taking over as the gym leader once more. This does raise a very curious question though. How? It is shown that there is an official form that must be submitted to the Pokemon Inspection Agency, notifying them of any change in leadership. What is unknown is this new leader would need to be approved by the PIA. I would argue that they will face a practical test in the form of a Pokemon battle with an official representative. This is further suggested when a Nurse Joy from the Pokemon Inspection Agency shows up at the Pewter City Gym when there was no official leader present. She was going to shut it down. It is mentioned that Flint had lost the paperwork regarding the change in leadership and so the PIA was unaware. When Forrest, Brock's younger brother, asserted that he had been acting as the leader of the Pewter Gym, he was offered a battle by Nurse Joy to give him the opportunity to be officially instated as the leader. Forrest had lost this battle as Nurse Joy had sent out Latias, one of the legendary Eon Duo Pokemon aside Latios. He was however recognised for his skill in battle against a legendary Pokemon and this was enough for Joy to approve him as the new official leader, and thus, the city of Pewter got to keep their gym. Apart from the gym, the other major establishment here is the Pewter Museum of Science, located in northern Pewter City. This massive museum holds various attractions and exhibits, mostly centred around space exploration and fossil research. Within this building, you can find space shuttles, confirming that either Kanto Region has its own space agency, or that they've borrowed or potentially stolen space shuttles which were launched from the Hoenn region space. The fee is relatively cheap for a child's ticket, and you are only looking at a 50 Poke dollar fee. That's a pretty good bargain, seeing that you get to see rocks that have been collected from the moon, or possibly collected from Mount Moon after colliding with the Poke Earth. You will also be able to find fossils of ancient and long extinct Pokemon, such as the Helix and Dome fossils, which, if able to be reanimated, would produce Omanite and Kabuto, respectively, and the old Amber which would serve to bring back the mighty Aerodactyl. This building is made up of two floors. The ground floor houses the front desk and fossil exhibits, while upstairs is where you will find everything to do with space exploration. This museum was burned to the ground in the Pokemon Adventures manga by two rampaging and wild magma. Red was able to freeze them in place with the help of his Sand Shrew, but after the magma had regained consciousness, Team Rocket Mastermind, Giovanni, killed. Yes, killed. Not knocked out, but killed both magma with his cloister. Sometime later, the museum had been rebuilt, and during the invasion of the Elite Four, 
was placed under the protection of Brock as there was a young Kabuto inside. At the time we first visit Pewter City, there is a major police investigation underway as there have been many reports of fossil theft occurring at Mount Moon to the east. We quickly discover that Team Rocket is behind this dastardly scheme. Early on, Pewter City has a population of around 28 residents. In later games this does increase to 33 residents, however with numerous changes to the Pewter Museum of Science, less jobs are available which causes residents to move on and seek of employment. The people of Pewter do not seem to be Pokemon trainers themselves, as in the manga, when Red first arrives, he sees many people setting up tents to sell their goods, mostly fruits and vegetables and goods of this nature, but they are being plagued by a wild Pikachu with an exceptionally naughty side as it continues to cause a ruckus and steal everyone's food. Red catches this wild Pikachu, which will go on to be Pika, his fiercest and most loyal companion. Upon capturing Pika, the residents and merchants threw a massive feast to thank Red for his efforts. The people here love to watch Brock take on challenges at the gym and support him completely. They can be seen in attendance at all of Brock's matches and cheering for him unconditionally. Pewter City does have a Poke Center, however when Red arrives it is closed due to severe vandalism. We later find out that those that trashed the Poke Center were none other than the other gym leaders in Kanto. For those that don't know, in the manga, the gym leaders and Elite Four are genocidal maniacs, hell bent on controlling the world and eradicating all those that train Pokemon, but are in their eyes, not worthy. It really is an amazing read and I highly suggest giving it a go. Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of Pokemon, has come out and said that this manga is what he imagined his world would look like. Elite Four member Bruno lays siege to the city with a horde of Marchop and Marchoke during his final stages of the Elite Four's plan. In the anime, fellow Rock-type gym leader Roxanne of the Rossboro Gym in the Hoenn region states that the Pewter City Gym is the flagship gym for all Rock-types out there. It may just be nostalgia talking, however I would tend to agree. There are two paths that lead from Pewter City, you can go south, back into the Viridian Forest and then on to Viridian City, or you can head on to Route 3 which continues on to Mount Moon. Route 3 is where Red encounters Misty for the first time and she is struggling against a rampaging Gyarados, Red sends out Saw, his Bulbasaur, to battle and help out the young lady. Red eventually catches this Gyarados, but as he did, Misty tells him that the Gyarados is actually hers that had gone missing and then showed up after being enraged. This brings up an important question being, can you catch Pokemon that have already been caught? And I don't think there's a simple answer here. It is clearly possible in the manga, as Red did it just now, and in the anime movie, Pokemon the first movie. Mewtwo was able to not only capture everyone's Pokemon, but could even capture Pokeballs that had their Pokemon inside. I think it comes down to which media you are looking at. In the manga, yes. In the anime, maybe, sometimes. And in the games, no. No you can't. Route 3 is also a frequent hangout for a very popular youngster, Ben who loves to yell out about his love of shorts, because they're comfy and easy to wear. Continuing through Route 3 will lead you into Mount Moon, a huge landmark between Pewter City and Cerulean City. The mountain is that large, you could even see it from Pallet Town. Mount Moon is a rather famous place in Kanto, as it's one of the few locations where wild Clefairy can be found. There's also something about this place that causes relatively frequent meteor showers that often leave moonstones littered throughout the mountain. It is not uncommon to find ancient Pokemon here in the form of fossils. Mount Moon is also where Pokemon League champion Red is defeated by Elite Four members Agatha and Lorelei, as well as Bruno who'd been placed under some form of mind control. After wiping Red's teams, he was encased in ice for a long time. This is what led to his injuries that would guide him to Mount Silver so that he could rest them in the healing hot springs inside. Alright trainers, this has been episode 3 of Poke Geography. In the next episode, we'll be taking a look at Cerulean City. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.